Let's talk about oligohydramnios and polyhydramnios and everything you need to know about them for your boards and clerkships. But first, let's take a step back and look at how these dates are defined. Oligohydramnios is when there is a decreased amount of amniotic fluid, which is what those down arrows are highlighting. And polyhydramnios is where there is an increased amount of amniotic fluid, which is what the up arrows are highlighting. But to be more precise in the definition of oligohydramnios and polyhydramnios, we use the amniotic fluid index to define them. So normal amniotic fluid is between 5 to 24 centimeters. So amniotic fluid less than 5 is oligohydramnios. And amniotic fluid greater than 24 is polyhydramnios. So now you know the numbers, but you might be wondering what influences the amount of amniotic fluid that is present. Well, simply put, it's influenced by three main things. One, swallowing. Two, placental insufficiency. And three, urinating. Swallowing causes the amniotic fluid to leave the amniotic sac and enters the fetus. So swallowing decreases the amniotic fluid. However, urinating does the opposite. Urinating adds to the amniotic fluid. Some people even say the amniotic fluid is basically just a sack of the baby's pee. So more urination equals more amniotic fluid. And now we have the placenta. So the placenta transfers nutrients from the mother to the baby. And it allows the baby to receive everything it needs for adequate growth and development. So if the placenta is affected, this affects growth and development, which in turn decreases the amniotic fluid production. So placental insufficiency decreases amniotic fluid. Overall, swallowing decreases amniotic fluid. Placental insufficiency also decreases amniotic fluid and urination increases amniotic fluid. Now that we understand those basic concepts, let's look at oligohydramnios. So using the amniotic fluid index, oligohydramnios is defined as a state where there is less than 5% of amniotic fluid. So there is less amniotic fluid than what is normal. A contributor to the development of oligohydramnios is placental insufficiency. This occurs in any state that affects the integrity of the placenta. This includes hypertension or preeclampsia, diabetes mellitus, and sickle cell disease in the mother. And of course, abruptio placentae. So remember, placental insufficiency causes a decrease of amniotic fluid. Another factor that contributes to the development of oligohydramnios is urination. Well, more specifically, if urination is affected, this causes oligohydramnios. This can be due to states like renal agenesis or posterior urethral valves. Another important factor are drugs used by the mother, such as NSAIDs, ACE inhibitors and ARBs because they can lead to renal insufficiency or affect the overall development of kidneys. So overall, oligohydramnios is caused by placental insufficiency and any state that causes a decreased urination. An extremely high yield association with oligohydramnios is pulmonary hypoplasia. So let's try to understand the pathophysiology behind this. A normal amount of amniotic fluid allows for a normal amount to enter the lungs. Thus, there is a normal volume of liquid in the lungs. 
This normal volume of liquid in the lungs causes an adequate expansion of the lungs, leading to overall a normal lung development. So normal amount of fluid equals to a normal lung development. However, in oligohydramnios, the amniotic fluid is decreased, thus affecting the overall growth and development of the lungs, causing pulmonary hypoplasia. Knowing the association between oligohydramnios and pulmonary hypoplasia is very, very high yield, so never forget it. Another high yield association is the connection between pulmonary hypoplasia to Potter sequence. So Potter sequence arises due to renal agenesis, which is labeled as number one right here, because it is the inciting or initial event. Recall that renal agenesis causes decreased urination, and so it is a cause of oligohydramnios, which is labeled as number two. This then leads to pulmonary hypoplasia as we discussed before. The other features of Potter's sequence include twisted face, twisted skin, and extremity deformities. So these features are seen because amniotic fluid acts as a kind of cushion for the baby from injury or trauma. So when there's too little of this, the protective effects of amniotic fluid are taken away or very limited. My question for you is what tocolytic can cause oligohydramnios? Leave the answer down below in the comment section. And if you are enjoying this high yield content so far, be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell. Now let's continue. We have to know the complications of oligohydramnios, and these include fetal malposition, umbilical cord compression, preterm delivery, and meconium aspiration. So it's very important that you realize that if there is too much or too little amniotic fluid, this can lead to fetal malposition. And speaking of too much amniotic fluid, let's talk about polyhydramnios. So as defined by the amniotic fluid index, polyhydramnios is a state where the amniotic fluid is greater than 24 centimeters. A major contributing factor to polyhydramnios is swallowing. So if swallowing is decreased, that means that more amniotic fluid can be in the amniotic sac. The causes of decreased swallowing include the most common, which is idiopathic, as well as anencephaly, esophageal or duodenal atresia, and tracheoesophageal fistula. So these are all states that affect swallowing. And the next factor that contributes to polyhydramnios is urination, specifically increased urination. So this includes multiple gestation. So two babies equals double the P, so that's more P. And maternal diabetes mellitus. This is because the hyperglycemic state triggers an osmotic diuresis in the fetus, so they produce even more urine. So essentially, the main contributing factors to polyhydramnios are decreased swallowing and increased urination. Complications of polyhydramnios include fetal malposition, umbilical cord prolapse, preterm labor, PPROM, and postpartum hemorrhage. So recall that the most common cause of postpartum hemorrhage is uterine atony. And uterine atony can occur due to uterine distension. And of course, polyhydramnios is a cause of uterine distension. So that's why polyhydramnios can cause postpartum hemorrhage. Also, if you look at the first two complications here, you can see that they were also listed as complications for oligohydramnios. So remember that, fetal malposition, 
and umbilical cord prolapse are complications of both oligohydramnios and polyhydramnios. So you know that the most common cause of polyhydramnios is idiopathic. But what is the most common cause of oligohydramnios? And the answer is rupture of membranes. So in summary, oligohydramnios and polyhydramnios are both states where there is an abnormal amount of amniotic fluid. Using the amniotic fluid index, oligohydramnios where there is less than 5 cm of amniotic fluid while polyhydramnios is where there is more than 24 centimeters of amniotic fluid. The most common cause of oligohydramnios is rupture of membranes, while in polyhydramnios the most common cause is idiopathic. Causes of oligohydramnios include placental insufficiency. So this includes states like hypertension, preeclampsia, diabetes mellitus, or sickle cell disease, as well as decreased urination. This occurs if the fetus has posterior urethral valves or renal agenesis, or if the mother is taking drugs that affect the development of the fetus, such as NSAIDs, ACE inhibitors, and ARBs. While for polyhydramnios, it's caused by decreased swallowing. That includes states like anencephaly and TE fistulas. And diabetes mellitus and fetal hyperglycemia are states that trigger a osmotic diuresis in the fetus, causing increased urination. The main contributing factors to oligohydramnios include placental insufficiency and decreased urination. While for polyhydramnios, that includes decreased swallowing and increased urination. The very high yield association that we must remember for oligohydramnios is pulmonary hypoplasia, which is a part of the Potter sequence. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you like this content, be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell. As always, thank you so much for watching and to continue learning more, click this video right here. Thank you. Bye.